Have you ever thought to yourself it would be so great if I could really create awesome, intricate animations solely within Figma or Adobe XD? In this case, we're gonna be using Figma without having to leave Figma. You know, like for instance, it kind of sucks having to recreate everything like in Adobe After Effects to create some really cool UI animations for your ideas. So now in this video, I'm gonna show you a single plugin which is free called Figmotion where you can do just that without having to leave Figma. Now before we begin, I just wanted to mention if you're interested in UI design but you're not very good, well then you should definitely take my UI design bootcamp at scrimba.com. At Scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, 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 you're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So make sure you click the very top link here in the YouTube description, and that way you'll get access to my course along with many others for a very low monthly fee. Let's get started. Alrighty, so we have Figma open here. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is I right click on the canvas. We're gonna to go to plugins and then go to browse plugins. And this is of course, assuming you don't have Figmotion already installed. Uh, we can click on this plugins over here, type in Figmotion and install. Click install, obviously it's already installed here. Um, and then you come back here. I believe you have to refresh uh, if you have a current document open. And I'm just using the desktop uh, frame right here. And let's get ready to rock. So I'm not gonna sit here wasting your time designing like a ton of like, just like a, like a massive UI. We're only gonna have three elements. We're gonna have a headline, subheadline, and a, an image of some sort. So, um, generate the trees. Honestly, that just came to mind right now, that type. That I have no clue what's going on whatever all right underneath we'll have like a description not a sub headline maybe just like a description of text so because we want good visual hierarchy we're going to scale that thing down a lot and also change from bold to regular now i'm going to drag out uh, just the text area kind of size right here and right click plugins and i have the lorem ipsum plugin you can install that as well using the same method that we used before and we'll choose generate all right so looking a little bit uh, boring, I guess, but that's okay. Uh, again, this isn't the purpose of the tutorial. Uh, I'll go ahead and change the line height here just a little bit, get that separated out. And then I'm going to over here have a rectangle. Maybe we'll just like have it sit right about there, move this up here. It'll be kind of like in the center of this area. Um, and then we'll select this, we're gonna right click plugins and we're gonna choose unsplash. All right, yet another one. Uh, another plugin that you can install. Uh, now, Unsplash I use all the time, so I recommend using it. Um, trees. Let's just let's put in trees because for some strange reason, um, I chose trees. I like that. Look how cool that looks. That's nice looking. All right, so just you know, a half-baked, half-assed sort of a UI that we have here, but that's all we need just to demonstrate the purpose of the Fig Motion. I plug in. So what we want to do is first we'll select the frame, right click, go to plugins, and then choose Fig Motion. And we're going to choose Open Fig Motion right here. Now, as you can see, uh, it's showing if we have the layers panel out open over here in the make main Figma interface, and then over here we have the same sort of uh, view of our layers. Now, here's the problem. If you go back here, like maybe you move this out of the way and you add a layer or something, like if we hit duplicate, over here we can see the two duplicated layers in the main Figma interface, but over here we do not. You will have to click up here, and why is it hanging up there? Um, well, these buttons are cut in half right now. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to get them resituated. It, apparently it's not gonna happen. If I click update layers, however, you'll see they're both right there. Um, we don't want that though. We'll click update layers again. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, here's how this works. Basically, we have, a t you know, if you've ever worked with uh, keyframe animation based software, of which there's many, freaking After Effects, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, I believe, uh, so many. Um, the way we handle animation is this timeline right here. And as you can see, you know, zero seconds, 0.1 seconds. And then we can also go pretty far out here, as you can see, like the 10 seconds. I think the max is 20 seconds. So it gives you quite a bit of leeway. 
Um, and then over here, we have the individual layers. If you click on them, we could see it's X, Y, Z, width, height, opacity, rotation, fill. Okay, I'm not gonna read all those. But those are basically the available properties that you have at your disposal to animate uh, individually and simultaneously. So here's the thing about animation design and motion design, as it's called. Uh, you, 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 just because you're able to animate everything doesn't mean you should. Uh, you want things to come in in a consistent manner and almost in an unnoticeable but very nice and pleasing manner. Um, this, while this isn't going to be like a motion design tutorial, I thought I'd just throw that out there. All right, so let's say, for instance, we want to have this particular page kind of animate in from nothing. So initially it's going to look like that. And then these three elements are going to animate in somehow. Um, we could do that through a simple opacity fade, although that's kind of lame. Um, we could do it through an opacity and a movement. Maybe they'll all come down a little bit. Maybe they'll all reveal uh, in some way, shape, or form. So let's just go with that idea. We'll just kind of have them kind of slide in. So what I'll do is take this. We're going to start with this one first. And this is um, this rectangle one here. All right. So this is starting at the very zero. But what I want to do is kind of move this to where, based on how long I want this animation to occur, I we're going to move it to that, that, that section. So maybe we'll just do like one second. So a thousand milliseconds. We'll put it right there. And then I'm going to, if you, it's kind of hard to see them initially. Bad contrast. You guys need to increase that contrast of these little keyframe icons right here. Uh, but no big deal. Uh, you, you're going to want to click one of these based on what it is that you want to adjust. So let's adjust the position, the Y axis, which is up and down. We'll put a keyframe there. And then also adjust the height. All right. So this is its end point. We're going to go all the way back here to the beginning, to the very beginning point. And then now we're going to change these uh, in some way, shape, or form. So um, what I'll do is, now notice there's already already a keyframe here. If we select it, we're able to put in the a value right here. Um, right here, we're just going to put in, uh, for the height, we're going to put zero. All right. And, oh, that's for the Y position. I'm sorry. So that puts it up there kind of in the middle of it, which is technically zero. Um, and then for the height, we're going to put in zero as well. Oops, I forgot for the height, you, can, you can't put zero, it has to be one, at least like that's the smallest value. So you can see it right up there. Okay, so now if we hit play, isn't that kind of cool? Uh, how it kind of just kind of fills out. Um, so we'll watch this again. Now, it's if you right click on these, you can see uh, if we pop up, it has a linear easing applied to it. And that just kind of affects, it, it just means it's gonna have like the same exact type of um, animation curve all throughout. It's linear, it's a little bit boring. So if you go to the very end keyframe and we click on it, you can see it says linear, that's where we change it. So you can use something like custom um, and you can go to like a website where you can, um, I get different types of uh, easings to put in. Uh, I'm just gonna use, um, we'll just use ease in and out. Now, if we hit okay, let's do that for both of these. Ease in out, hit okay. And then we go back here and we hit play. It, it's, it's just a more natural sort of uh, animation that occurs. So I think it looks pretty good. And then now, perhaps, when this starts to move in, maybe around like two, 300 milliseconds, let's do 300. I, I did not mean to do that. I don't know why it scrolled up that far. Let me go to like 300 here. All right, so when it's starting here, maybe we'll, we'll reveal this text as well. Um, so there's a few ways to do it. Um, in this context, a context simply because we have um, a white background, I'm gonna put two layers on top um, and they're both going to be white. So by default, the things behind them, which are the text, will be hidden. Oh, did that not duplicate? Unreal. Duplicate that. Get that into place. All right, there we go. So now they're both hidden. We have to hit update layers, and those will show up below. And let me collapse that. So rectangle two, 
is right there and rectangle three is at the top. So we wanna animate three first because it's at the top and that will naturally happen first. So at 300 milliseconds, we'll animate, uh, we'll animate, let's see, yeah, I think we'll animate it up on the y-axis. So I'm gonna try something I haven't tried yet with this. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, let's move over to like the end portion of this. Um, let's just go, let's go back to 100, uh, about a, right there. All right, so what we'll do now is for three, we're gonna just put in a keyframe at the y position. All right, now we're gonna go all the way back now notice that's zero, so we can drag this up to like around 300. All right, and with this one, we wanna change the position. Now notice here, it says insert node value. I believe, I haven't tested this, but I believe what that means is if we move this up, we can click this, and it says 189. Um, oh, I think I just realized something, I screwed up and reversed these. So let me back up just a second, all right. So let's hit the, let's hit, um, go back to zero, let's hit play. Yeah, I kind of screwed this up because um, those are being hidden. So if I take this one, and I'm gonna leave this in just because, just to let everybody know I'm human too. All right, so 189, I'm gonna remember that. We're gonna change this one at the end to 189. So 189, now let's go back and hit play. There we go. All right, and let's do the same thing with this one down here. Except, you know what? I don't want it hiding this. Or you know what we could do is we could do height as well and just kind of push it right there. All right, so rectangle two is right here. And we're gonna put in a keyframe right around here for height this time and Y as well. And then we'll go all the way to the end around 1000 milliseconds where the other ones end. And why is it doing that? There we go. And I'm gonna put in Y and height as well. Now for these ones, we're going to uh, change the height here. And we're also gonna push it right there. All right, so now what we can do is click this, insert the node value, and this, insert the current node value as well. And if any luck, if we hit play, there we go. So now, let's get this way out of the way. And there we go. This is a type of animation that you really wanna be able to create here in Figma when things are happening at different points in the timeline within the same artboard or the, or the frame as it's called. Okay. Now, uh, let's say for instance, you're happy with the animation. You know, what is it that you can do at this point in order, I, I, boy, this is really frustrating me. That part of that UI was hidden. Let's go back to it. Um, fig motion, open it. There we go, now it should be fixed. We have to select the frame though, there we go. Now we can see all the buttons. I'm not sure what that was about. So now, wait, did it just, oh, I thought it like got rid of everything. I was about to like get really upset about that. So now what we can do is we can, uh, we have a, a few options here, render and export. So if we click render, basically it allows you to change the video format um, from MP4, GIF, and webcam. Um, let's, let's hit render, just show, just show, just so I can show you um, the result. All right, so I paused for a second. Uh, it didn't take that much longer, like 30 seconds maybe. View last render, if we click it, now notice how much smoother this appears as opposed to when we were clicking the play button in the editor itself. So it's actually really smooth. And so I like that a lot. Now this is something where you can now take this uh, prototype based animation and you can put, you, you can show you know a developer or the front end developer who's responsible for making all this stuff actually work. Um, and yeah, that's a really handy tool. So now, we can also hit export. We can export this as, as actually CSS or as JSON. So if I save that and we open this up, there we go. So basically it takes the, the uh, selector names as, as IDs 
as, as we can see here, um, from the names of the layers. Obviously, you would, you would want to use something better in naming conventions rather than rectangle. Um, so we have rectangle one. Here's the uh, initial transform, and then the animations, and then here's the each, each animation thereafter. And one thing that's I uh, you know annoying about it is it is in pixel and absolute you know units uh, as opposed to like relative units. But uh, that would just be a matter of adjusting those yourself if you wish. And this is something that as well that you can hand to the front end developer or they can take themselves um, to, to help them set up all of the individual keyframes. All right, everybody, hopefully you learned something new. Just a quick uh, video here just to teach you some awesome new plugin. Uh, I'm not sure how new it is, I'll be honest with you, but at least it is for this channel that you can use to create awesome UI animations. All right, I'll see you all soon. Goodbye. <laughs>